Hello, welcome along to Bangkok Chit Chat, and we're going to be speaking to Richard in just a moment with a Hua Hin report. Got loads of stuff to talk to him about. But first of all, we'd just like to thank everyone that has subscribed to the channel. Thanks for subscribing. And also, we've just had a surge in the last six weeks of a lot more new subscribers. So thank you as well for doing that. Hope you enjoy the show. If you're a newcomer to the channel, then don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Right, Richard Hua Hin. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Thank yes. you so much, and good to see you, uh, see you this brand new year. And it's a beautiful day down here, and uh, yeah, it's been so far so good, apart from the lockdowns, which are yeah. not really affecting us as much as they are on the southeast coast. But here, we've had a lot of problems, obviously, with COVID, a lot of restrictions, and we can go into some of that. Yeah. But other than that, life appears to be pretty good. Do you want to kick off? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Okay. So in in Ho Hin just now, uh, what what have been the the effects? Now you're part of this red zone. So just to explain to viewers, we have we have the red zone, which is basically sort of like uh, sort of tier tier three, tier four UK four, equivalent. Four. Yeah. Tier four, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you get yellow, which has got reduced. Uh, but the, t the red zones have got more restrictions on them. One, uh, they were because of the new year. Just like uh, UK and other countries, they were concerned about the, the spread. Yeah? So uh, I was speaking to a friend the other day who was traveling up from Hoa Hin to Bangkok, and he said there was no checks at all. Yeah? Maybe it's because New Year's finished now, uh, but have you, have you heard anything and what's, what's actually happening from, you know, because they're talking about you're going to, in the eastern, eastern seaboard states yeah? uh, or provinces, they're having to get authorization from, the, from the, the, the government office to be able to travel and get a piece of paper. What's happening down in Hoa Hin? Well, yeah, it is interesting. Um, I believe that there are, there are no restrictions immediately around this area, but uh, we're a little bit untested whether or not we can go up and down to Bangkok. So I know there's a group that I know of that are driving or supposed to be driving up to Bangkok today they haven't had any authorization from the local authority. Um, and they are going to go up to Bangkok and see whether they can get through without being stopped. And again, likewise, after the day, they might well try and come back. So I'm not sure. Because yeah, um, the part of the reason I'm asking is because uh, one of the Smut Sakon, which is on the east of, of Bangkok, Sorry, on, on the west of Bangkok, yeah, uh, that has been uh, basically classed as a red zone, and they're, they're they're stopping people going in. But you have to go through that province to get to Bangkok. So, so what I think well, what, what we're really seeing is that just now, everything's really up in the air, and everyone's a little bit confused and what the what what what's required for what, and it, and it seems to change. Like restaurants, they said uh, they have to close at seven o'clock. Yeah, Two hours later, they said you can close at nine, nine o'clock. Well, yeah. I mean, I know it's a report from Hua Hin, but I, I have to vent that th there is a lot of misinformation coming out. I mean, if you heard the latest on this More Chana app, the word went out, first of all, if you don't have it, that the app, and you get tested for COVID, then you can get fined 40,000 baht or something like that, uh, two years in jail, blah, 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 blah. There was an uproar on social medias about it. And then the guy comes up and says, well, no, it's not that bad and da, da, da. And now he's come out today, a few hours ago, and said, back to the original one, yes, if you get tested and you haven't got the app, then you are liable to 40,000 baht fine or two years. Or... I think um, I read the news this morning on the radio and I had a look at that story. And it appears that the government regulation was to uh, say that which the prime minister signed off in March saying that people the government was encouraging people to install the app it didn't say that it was actually compulsory mm. however um, it does appear that the announcement that was made yesterday um, seemed to imply that it might have been compulsory mm. however I think I think the government are more concerned about people uh, trying to conceal information, i.e. trying to conceal the fact that they may be infected. So if they find that you have concealed information and you don't have the app, then I think you're likely to be in trouble. Richard, are you talking about, are you talking about the 7-Eleven debacle? Did you hear about that? <laughs> Well, I, yeah, I mean, I wasn't really thinking of one particular incident, actually. <laughs> but that proves the point. 
But in general, if you try to consider the fact that you may be sick, then you could end up in, in trouble, particularly if you don't have the app. But I don't believe it's actually compulsory to install it, even though everybody's encouraged. Actually, around here, people don't seem to use the Tai Chana app. They're using the Line app, which, uh, which has been tweaked and, and is, is working with most of the shopping malls here. Mm. So when I go into Market Village here, I use the Line app to check in and to check out. Mm. A lot of okay. people don't even bother doing that, but, um, but I certainly do. Well, one question I did want to ask you, um, you, you've had Christmas and New Year there. I know it's in the past, but what was New Year like in Hua Hin? This is before this, the second wave came more, more evident. How was it? Quiet. Really? You didn't hear that. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Fireworks? A few, not many. In fact, um, we went up, we have a little condo down in Kautaki Ave, and we went down there up on the roof at midnight to have a look and see if there were any fireworks. It was quite interesting. I do, I do have one story about that. It was one of the biggest hotels um, down the road. They set off their fireworks from a barge, which is a few hundred meters off the coast. And uh, it was the, the day before New Year's Eve, it was quite choppy. And the barge was out there and they tested it and checked it all out. And then the day before New Year's Eve, the barge somehow broke free from its moorings. <laughs> and, and it ended up drifting down. Yeah, you get the picture. Happy New Year, Padia. <laughs> they managed to go and retrieve the barge right. and relocate it for the following evening, which is New Year's Eve. Okay. And then, well... The, the problem is that they checked the barge and they realized it was actually sinking. <laughs> they, so they had about a million bahts worth of fireworks on this thing and they let them off at seven o'clock at night instead of, instead of midnight. Before they got wet. <laughs> Before the thing actually might have sunk. Oh, that's, so, good. that's a good story. Great story. Yeah. Oh, I, I feel sorry for the poor people in their heart of hearts they were trying to support people and then that all happened can you imagine waking up in the morning going where's the barge <laughs> where's the 1.5 million bars worth of fireworks is what I'd be asking <laughs> so Richard um, you've always been very po positive on your reports from Hua Hin and you've actually got us on that wave as well and we've been very supportive of Hua Hin mainly from because we don't go there of what you've been saying and it's all looked very uh, vibrant energetic you've turned the other cheek to Covid and you say we're, we're carrying on now my question to you is how many times can you get hit on the head and is this going to be just another stroke against businesses reopening and I mean it's negative stuff but well let's not um, let's not you know um, avoid the fact that a lot of people have lost their jobs a lot of people are on 50% salary a lot of people are really struggling here um, and many restaurants have had to close and so have many other businesses so yeah COVID's hit quite hard down here um, there's no escaping that. Have the hotels, the ho hotels that have been dependent on people travelling at the weekends from Bangkok and that, I guess that's stopped now. Well, I'm at the Marriott, as you can see, and they were just saying that uh, they're not expecting a large number of people here this weekend. Um, and this is obviously affecting business and it's going to be a long-term problem. Um, okay, the Marriott is in pretty good shape in terms of the fact they've got good owners here that are able to support the hotel. But many properties, you know, the independent hotels are obviously struggling and some have closed um, and a lot of people have lost their jobs. No escaping that. Can, you know, uh, uh, over the past, uh, let's say, three, four weeks, especially, I mean, the promotions have been going on for some time. There was a promotion, you were getting some absolutely fantastic deals, where normally you'd be paying six, 7,000 baht a night in a hotel, you were getting at 1,500 and things like that. And I, I took advantage going, going down to Kaolap, yeah, and also uh, to Paria, yeah. Uh, and, you know, we went to the Marriott in, in uh, Kaolap and went to Move and Pick uh, in, 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 in Jomtian, yeah, 
and it was it was fantastic yeah but is that stopped now or is it is is, is, is it the point where the people are saying listen i just don't want to travel even with that promotion no, you you can still get very good deals in hotels um you know up and down the coast here uh, some of the major hotels and some of the smaller hotels but again you know here where you can see we at the marriott they've decided to hold the prices for a while because you know they have a there's a quality aspect to it and the types of people that come to this hotel are not that worried about the price it just attracts that type of customer. And I'm sure the same applies to the Centara and the major, you know, five-star hotels up and down the coast here. Yeah, but, you know, another five-star hotel yesterday where I had a meeting and everything was shut. The restaurant was closed. I couldn't even get a cup of coffee. Um, you see, my, my, my question is that Bangkok is notorious in the first wave Let's call it a first wave. It wasn't big. But everyone just hunkers down and doesn't travel. You get into his studio today, which normally on a Friday would take 45, 50 minutes, took 15 minutes to get here. So I'm saying at the weekend, you're not going to get Bangkok trade. People are just not going to come down there for a while. Well, it, that's probably the case in, in January anyway. No, I, no, I, people, after, it's cheap. After, it's cheap. They after the do. holiday period. No. But, I, think that, I think it also depends on whether the government is going to allow them to come down. And as we were saying earlier, there's a lot of uncertainty. And the uncertainty will put a lot of people off coming down, clearly. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect to see so many people on the road this weekend. Yeah. So, so basically what we're saying is uh, there should be a very, very clear, defined statement of what you can and cannot do you know, and where you can and cannot travel. Uh, and I suppose there's, maybe they would say, well, we're doing that already by stating uh, zones and things like that. Uh, so I'll put a couple of links in the description of, of uh, where you can go and also to get this uh, this app. Yeah? Now, if it's a legal requirement or it becomes a legal requirement, it's better to have it. You can always delete it afterwards. Yeah? Uh, some people don't like it because they're saying, you're tracking us, yeah? no. uh, so, sort of thing, which is true, they are. Yeah? Uh, so I can put these links on. What about uh, just now... Uh, the general consensus down there is, is are people saying well listen we just have to keep moving forward are they optimistic are they saying oh this is the second time forget it like airlines are in, in, in deep trouble just now uh, so I mean hotels obviously they've, they've got pain yeah uh, but what's the general consensus negative or saying hey listen we'll just move forward focus on the local I think people are getting more and more depressed with this whole situation and getting more frustrated but um, the reality is more and more businesses are going out of business. Mm. And that's going to continue because not everybody has deep pockets. So, you know, I, I, I think things are going to get very difficult here. Uh, as we mentioned before on previous chats, there's a whole community of people, you know, around here that just can hardly afford to eat and can hardly afford the basic essentials. Mm. So... Um, you know, there, there's also a lot of charity work going on here to try and, you know, get get food and get essentials to some of the yeah. the local community, the local Thai community that are are really struggling. Yeah. And it and it and it's that end of the spectrum, it's that community that really is feeling the worst of this. You know, you and me, we okay, we may not be getting quite so much in terms of income, or we may not have all the all the nice things that we're used to. But we can see the fact that we're going to ride this thing through. Yeah. But a lot of people don't see that. They don't have that yeah. vision. And this is why there also, you know, there's been dis there's been some discussion about possible unrest uh, because uh, some people can't eat, uh, and that's that's one of the that's that's one concern. This is this is not from the foreigner. This is actually from Thais, a professor. He said the danger here is that this time they 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 can't get the food. Uh, now, if they lo start locking things down, all the questions come up. How do we transport food? Are these lorry drivers <laughs> having to get tested all the time? You know, pe pe so people are going to start hoarding. And I, I must admit, I look at the UK and then I look at Thailand. It seems to, what happens in, in, in the UK seems to kick on into Thailand. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, another thing we're, talk we're, we're, we're thinking about uh, on Hoa Hin, uh, and maybe it's just n it's, it's a national answer rather than a, a yeah. provincial one, is the vaccine. Yeah. So basically, they're, they're looking at getting the Chinese vaccines in. I think the total vaccines are booked to 60... Something 60 million, million 63 million or something. 
Yeah, uh, so there's some coming from uh, China, and then there's some coming from Oxford, and they've got a license to produce here through there's some agreement uh, for that. But that's not till sort of they're talking about May. Yeah, they get 30, 30 well, million people covered. Just a quick update on that. Again, reading the news this morning, I was uh, quite intrigued to see that um, two million doses are going to be um, uh, uh, imported uh, almost immediately, okay. and within the next month those two million are going to start to be um, distributed amongst um, the elderly and, of course, the, the health workers. So that's going to happen very quickly with the Chinese vaccine. Richard, what is your, what, what is your view on the vaccine? Uh, because, you know, we're hearing stories about, obviously, it, well, you, you had the figures, it doesn't cure you, All but right. it's... So, so the, uh, the, the word vaccine gives you the impression that it stops you getting it. Uh, but it's a bit. It's, it have to, people have to treat this more like a cold. It doesn't stop you getting it. What it does, it reduces the symptoms of what you get. And then other people turn around and say, you know, well, uh, if if I don't get it or or if, or if I get the symptoms and I recover, I'm okay. It doesn't really matter. So what's the big issue? Well, the big issue is that uh, the ongoing effect. It can affect some people and the, uh, their brain, their their brain, but also internal organs. Uh, so it's a long term effect, even though you don't die from it. Yeah? Uh, people, obviously, people with diabetes or, or or heart conditions or things like that. Yeah, they've got higher risk of, of dying. But the key thing of the whole thing is ICU facilities. There's not enough ICU facilities. So from what I saw, they're actually going to be setting up uh, other facilities to be able to, to, to cope with the COVID. They're well, here? It. Yeah, 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 just now, yeah. They're looking at I think Thailand's very good at doing that kind of thing. They do seem to be able to set up field hospitals very quickly. Um, but I don't know how many ventilators they've got. I don't know how many staff they've got. And I'm not a... A doctor, no. so I can't really, no. you know. No. But the thing with the vaccine that I, would you take the vaccine if it was available? Um, that's a good question. I think I'd probably like to leave it a month or two. I'd like to leave it a year or two because, you know, there could be the, the scenario of, Normally, vaccines take two and a half, three years to develop because th there's a lot of trials that have to be done once they think they've got it right and there's fine tuning and whatever. These long trials, then they're short trials. So down the road, 10 years from now, we could be getting side effects from this or, you know, people that were pregnant when they took it could, you know, be giving birth to deformed children or or you know the the person that took the vaccine could develop some other issues in their organs i think it's been rushed because it has to be rushed because it's a pandemic and we've got to get a hold of it but does that mean that the vaccine is the safe way to go or you should only take it if you're in a very i was almost going to say got nothing to lose you're in a very vulnerable position you have other ailments as well and you don't want on top of your other ailments the the covid 19 messing things up as well i would be like you i would wait a while i would rather get it uh, the way i feel at the moment through that vaccine it's like a vaccine when you get it because you become semi-immune to it in the future right uh no it's just this thing you can still catch it well like measles you don't catch again do you well, uh, this isn't measles, but uh, well, no, this, but this is a flu. Do you get flu again? Well, they have flu vaccines out there for years, yeah, and you, people take them. They say that the chances of you getting it a hard so or b at all are, yeah. are, are, are are a lot less. And and that the, this is this will this will probably be a, a similar thing. But uh, as you said, we don't know. I think what we'll have is uh, the, the government will insist. That, that everybody gets it, oh, uh, oh. and it will go alongside their ID card and foreigners that. That stupid list of that blood test, you know, you do a blood test when you're doing your work permit or your visa, they want to get you to get a doctor's certificate, yeah? Uh, and it has a list of inane things. Every doctor I've met around said, I don't know why the hell they're testing for this, but we have to go through the procedure. That'll be on the list okay. that you've had that, that test, and that's well, how they'll, they'll, they'll I, I expect. Before, like we, said, before we move on for the lighter things, there's one thing I really wanted to ask you, Richard, because I keep getting asked this. Why in Thailand are your figures so low? And I was on the sort of point believing that 
it was low because it was low. People weren't having it. Because I used to quote, look, the death mortality rate is the same as it has been over the last few years. Hospitals are not full. Respirators is not crying out for, we need more respirators or PPEs or anything like that. So I was thinking the proof is in the pudding is the eating of it, and it's not there. But now that they've started to test people, and not just people that have been in quarantine from other countries, but now in who are here, and this lady, I'm not going to go through it now, it's too complicated, but, you know, people are being screened and tested and the figures are going up. So I'm beginning to think that the figures are higher than what are publicised, in fact, much higher, but the ties, they just hunker down, as I said before. They, they grit their teeth, hunker down and see it through. They don't go out, they won't go from province to province. So, I think the figures are higher than, they, than, than, than we know. That's my take. What's yours? I was just having a, a chat with some colleagues here. Uh, we were saying much the same thing. We reckon the numbers are higher than are being publicized. Um, but there again, you know, the numbers are probably not that crazy because, as I pointed out, how many people do you know that have actually got COVID-19? Not in this country. So, so therefore, the numbers are probably not that high, but they're probably a little bit higher than are being well, you publicized. Think it's D by D, but don't you? That, uh, that's that's the matter is we simply don't know. And the other aspect is that a lot of the recent cases have come from migrant workers, or at least promoted to have come from migrant workers to have come in from Myanmar or whatever, or, or some other countries. Um, but on the other hand, you know, a lot of ties will have been infected by, by this population. Well. And don't forget the illegal gambling dens, the, the, the illegal gambling dens Bangkok that don't exist. Have any. Oh, no, yeah. we don't have any. Bangkok doesn't have any. No. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, that's the story. All right, let's move on then, shall we? Let's go on to, I don't know if there's any brighter news you've got for us, Richard, but... Uh... Yeah, absolutely, of course. Go for it, bro. Uh, there's a new, a fairly new um, television series going to be shown on the BBC and on Netflix called Serpent. Seen it. It's a, it's a true life story. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm on episode four at the moment. Oh, well, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, excellent. How did you see it? Um, and it was shot uh, up until last March and April. Yeah. Um, uh, they use quite a lot of the beaches and, and um, you know, just south of Wyhin, I believe. Yeah. Uh, for, for that. And also several other movies have been shot around here, of course, uh, yeah. using the uh, Centara Hotel, which was the old railway hotel, which is that lovely colonial. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Down the road from here. Yeah. So, no, this new series, I'd like to see it. So is this on Netflix? Andy, uh, is this what you're putting it on? Well, I'm not going to say how I got hold of it, but <laughs> get a different VPN and get the Netflix from England and you can get it straight away. But okay. why I liked it and why it was recommended to me, because it, it's, it starts back in about 1975, so it's before I yeah. came here, but it's the same sort of era. Some of the shots are brilliant of Pratu Nam, Pratu Wan, Pratubury Road. Uh, they are sort of like in Bangkok and then they just go down the road and they're on a beach. What, what's, about, what's that about? It's about a uh, serial killer. Oh. A couple, serial killers. Uh, no more spoilers. But the foot, why it was recommended to me, because the footage was brilliant. It was, it reminded me of what it was like when I came here. Yeah, the cars, the tuk-tuks, uh, the public transport. It was, yes, the hairstyles, flared trousers. <laughs> okay, so that, that's something that doesn't include social And I believe, you know, several other movies have been shot down here as well. Yeah. I mean, The Killing Fields was one where they used the Centara Hotel, yeah. um, the railway hotel, uh, and that was pictured as, as, as a hotel being in Phnom Penh, but actually they shot it here. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Thailand's used quite frequently yeah. as locations for other countries within the region. Is the Centara... Thailand's quite open to that. It's the Centara Hotel. I haven't been there since it was the railway hotel, but have they changed it at all, or is it still looking like it did? It's looking much the same. They've even given it a coat of paint. All right. So it's still got that colonial look and uh, that feel. Yeah, it is. Just, it just is another thing is, uh, you, 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 said about, the, you said about Thailand. And you, can go down, and you can go into their museum lounge 
which is semi-open and it's sort of 1930s, 40s style and you can have afternoon tea the way it should be. Right, correct. Uh, you said about the filming. Thailand is uh, one of the leading lo locations for, for filming. And actually, we, we actually issue the Thai, the Thai film uh, permits and all the uh, location permits and things like that. Who do you mean we? My company, yeah. Okay, through, sorry. Through, well, I wonder what who through, we was. So, well, ClipCube Media. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we actually apply for the, the Thai film permits on behalf of the customer and, and, and manage all the process, blah, blah, blah. But uh, the, 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 the amount of request we've had to come to Thailand even now uh, has been uh, really quite quite a lot yeah and uh, for film crews what what's happened now is they're using the local film crews more than bringing people from overseas because of the covid so they're still filming yeah. going on yeah uh, but they're using uh, Thai film crews and Thai film crews are generally very very good they're very well respected but uh, just another thing is there any, for different events there's you had the jazz festival i take it that's cancelled yeah or postponed well, no, that the jazz festival was back in December. Oh, oh no, right. we have another there another one. Yeah, there was another one for the fifteenth of January, wasn't it? I, I've got a note here: a full-blown feast of jazz. Is it on or off? And the date was the fifteenth. Do you know about that? Um, I would think that I'm not. I'm not too familiar with that, but I'm sure it will have been cancelled. Yeah. yeah. Um, Carabao was due to play down here with the band as well. Yeah. just a few days ago, over, the, over the holidays and cancelled. Yeah. Yeah. And I think basically any public activities that were scheduled are now cancelled. Okay. Just about everything. And you can't even go into the, into the main parks now. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, what else have you got? Not much. <laughs> That's about it. I mean, there isn't a lot. I mean, Welcome to lockdown. <laughs> cancelled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go back to this COVID thing, but I heard this but rumor about because yeah. I will because it has to be answered. Did you hear this thing about they're not calling it a lockdown because by not calling it a lockdown, they don't have to pay compensation to certain companies and people. Yeah. Have you heard that? So they're not using the term lockdown because it, uh, the way the, the law is, that if it's a lockdown, the government has to do so much. Well, but it's not a lockdown because you can still leave, leave, leave your home. Not in the five provinces down in... Uh, yes, you can still leave your home. Yeah, for the one hour. So England's in lockdown, but you can still leave your home for one hour exercise, one hour and shopping. Their and their bubble. There's nothing clear here about yeah. the bubble and things like that. I think you can still leave your... Still, we'll still walk around, yeah? But what they say in the UK is you can run, walk around for exercise, get home. Mm. Uh, you can go for essential services. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. But, but, so it's not quite a lockdown because okay. they can still serve in right. restaurants and things. No, I mean, there are... I think... I. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't really call this a lockdown as such, but a lot of people are choosing to stay at home, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and people are being a lot more cautious now. And interstate travel is being, you know, it's not encouraged, of course, and we all know this. So I think, you know, I think the majority of people have got the message and, and are fairly compliant, you know, unlike in some other places. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, um, what else has been going on here? There was an elephant that got, uh, stuck in a swamp last week and <laughs> was there for three or four days and they managed oh, to lever it so, so lever it out oh, and it lovely. got free and has got into a sanctuary okay. uh, Edwin Wheat is a, is a Dutch um, he's a Dutch uh, a national who yeah. is, um, is fluent in time, he's got this wildlife park where they take care of elephants and wild you know, and, and monkeys and all sorts of creatures. And, and of course, a lot of the elephants that were used for tourism rides and things like that yeah. uh, are now actually residing in his elephant park. That's so cool. Wow. I, I thought you were going to lead the story that the elephant had got COVID. <laughs> was gonna... yeah. That's a good question. Can they animals... can't, no. No? No, oh. no. no, it was a young yeah. elephant and it ended up in this swamp. And it looked like it was in a bit of a canal. Oh, but that's... They find Used oh, to hoist them oh. and get it. Through, I just, which is, oh, happy! I had a happy ending there. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, um, and the the, uh, the monsoon valley people here, they were, you know, they've got the wine bar and the restaurant, which is inland, about forty minutes drive, um, and they they have this huge vineyard, which is beautiful. Mm. And I went to a concert there last week, just before the lock, in brackets lockdown. <laughs> uh, they had a 
it was actually a classical concert. Um, they had a 40 piece orchestra, student orchestra come down from Bangkok on stage outside. And we had a, a huge dining area all outside. Oh, that sounds great. It was beautiful. Yeah. And they're going to do more of those. But of course, COVID's come back and restrictions have come back. But this was only 10 days ago we went to that. So, I know. you know, there are some lovely activities mm. that, that are being prepared and planned, but obviously just mm. being hit on the head at the moment. Well, let's see, let's see if things are getting Well, that's exactly what I was, yeah. I was going to end, I finished this off with just saying, Richard, we're going to be talking to you again probably about a month from now, if it, maybe a little bit sooner. And I think in that month, I don't think we're going to be in a good position. I think we're still going to be in the middle of all this because it's going to take a while, but at least we'll be used to the situation and we'll be able to see what is going on a, on a bit and how people are dealing with it. It's not a good time. Hunker down, I keep saying, you know, close your eyes. Well, don't close your eyes because you'll bump into things, but you know what I mean? Hunker down, grit your teeth, get through it if you can, help people if you can help. And, um, you know, th that's about it. What else can you say? Just, can just move, keep moving Moving forward in some yeah, way. Yeah. That's all. Well, I think it's important to maintain a positive attitude. And what you're hinting at mm. is one's mental health is obviously put under some stress. Yeah. And and I think, you know, different people react differently to the situation. Mm. And if one is financially stressed, that only makes life considerably worse. And there are a lot of people in that situation. But, you know, I like to stay positive and hopefully, as you suggest, we can, you know, see this thing through. Yeah. Yeah. OK, Richard, thanks very much for spending some time because I know you've had a really busy day today. You've been live on the radio. You've been doing it all. So we appreciate the time that you spend with us. And thanks for all the information. It's been, it's been really great. And to, well, have a good three or four weeks and we'll talk again. <laughs> Look forward to it, Andy. And Andrew, thank you very much for... Um, sharing this and um, and thank you also if you're watching that's good to have you that's lovely, lovely. okay okay, See you okay. Later. cheers okay well that was Richard who in report I mean I'd like to say it was all like what's it blooms and roses the way if you call it. it was all but it isn't because it is what it is yeah. but positive attitude very hard if you've lost a loved one on your job and you're not earning any money it's very hard to keep a positive yeah, and yeah. that mental health thing is definitely something that we should talk about uh, in the sense of COVID. Well, we had, we had a show which was out just recently. Yeah, yeah but that didn't really uh, touch on the COVID thing. But not, not the COVID, was, but mental health. Yeah, maybe you're interested more, more, in that. More, the second half was more, more yeah. specific about... For, for, for if people. you haven't seen it. Yeah, well, yeah. as I say again, thanks very much for all the subscribers that have joined us recently. We've got a, a good schedule for this year, well, what we think. So we've got a lot of new shows coming up, a lot of different people coming in, a lot of topics to discuss that I'm sure that you'll be interested in. Not depressing. Not, not depressing. depressing. Well, some of them are. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I think we'll miss well, the, the depressing the, things. Not depressing. <laughs> the suicide rate's gone up. No, we don't really want to go down that way. So anyway, we know that a lot of, because we've done our YouTube analytics, um, that a lot of people in, are watching us from Europe, and especially the UK as well. America, Australia, but there's a lot of people in the UK, and I, I know when we're talking about 300 new cases, 400 new cases, people in the UK go, we've had 60,000 and you know you are in us you have more restrictions than we do and it's cold and dark there so all I'm trying to say is <laughs> to make you even more depressed yeah. we don't have any of that no, no. <laughs> but we are thinking of you because we have loved ones over there as well and you know if we can if you can watch us and get some entertainment from it or some information from it then we've done our job so we're thinking about you we really are anyway all the best. Yeah, not only part of it. Don't forget to <laughs> like, share, and please give some comments. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're and if you're subscribing, don't forget to click the notification button. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to hear some some suggestions and what you yeah, like well, to hear. Yeah, yeah. what well, we can talk uh, about. And we can add that to within yeah. the schedule within the within the year. Yeah. Um, so listen, stay safe. Yeah. Uh, try and keep as positive as you Ooh. can. Yeah, I certainly am. This is the and Prime Minister yeah, of ClipQ Media. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to thank ClipQ Media actually for making these shows possible. And that's it from us. See you later. Yeah, back on Chit Chat.